What confuses me a little bit, I've been a lot to India, but of course I, I, I'm not an Indian. I mean, you, you speak like a politician, <laughs> like a political organizer, but you look like an Indian holy man. Uh, how, how do you combine these two? <laughs> I think I'm just speaking like a responsible human being, okay. <laughs> not as a politician or a holy man or an unholy man. The problem is just this, that uh, people have taken identities like this, somebody is an environmentalist, somebody is a politician, somebody is a spiritual person. I feel what we need is inclusive human beings, what that every one of us will do whatever within our capability, whatever is possible we will do for the well-being of all life around us. And I think that's just what I'm doing and that's just what I've inspired people to do. And only because people recognized that I don't belong to any group or any party or any kind of uh, segregation, that's why the entire India responded the way it responded. You have, you have seen the rivers uh, depleting, but then you, you, set aside, you set yourself the target, how can we mobilize people to, to be engaged with this? What, 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 what was your thinking? So the Rally for Rivers itself is uh, something that we envisioned and uh, set it forth and there were lots of skepticism everywhere because in India, rivers are a concurrent subject between the central or the federal government and the state governments. States are ruled by various different political parties, they never come together. But this time around, they sat together, they spoke in one voice, which is a tremendous concurrence this concurrence was one big stumbling block which we crossed quite effortlessly mm -hmm. and 162 million people participated in the rally, which is the largest ever for any moment.